Hello everybody and welcome back to Anne of Green Gables, the anime by Izata Kahata, the master. Woo. Yes. Uh, Alright, so today we're doing episode 5, Marilla Makes Up Her Mind, which happens to be an adaptation of chapter 6 of the book called Marilla Makes Up Her Mind. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you already know how this goes. Go to the description to get the episode. Uh, in fact, um, plenty of Canadians are loving my upload, it seems, based on the comments. <laughs> um, and Thank you, Canada. Thank hey. you, yes, thank you Canada for giving us this book, and thank you Takahata-san for making this wonderful anime. Uh, Alright, let's start everybody. Three, two, one, click. Yeah, if I remember, I'm checking the book's chapter right now. I don't think I have any book trivia for this one. It, 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 again, it's, it's very straightforward. I don't really have any particular... Unlike the previous episode, I don't have any awesome, cool trivia that I can mention, like the extra scene that Takahata made in the previous episode. So, um, welcome to episode 5 of Anne of, because Justin's going to stay Green Gables for very long, is she? Uh, Absolutely. In the, ne in the next episode, Whips, it, you can start calling it Anne of Green Gables. Or rather, or rather, or rather more like halfway for this episode. And no, and no, audience, come on. That's not, I'm not spoiling anything. I mean, it's called Anne of Green Gables. I'm pretty sure everybody can put one and one together and guess that she's totally going to stay. Um, Jova, is the, the, the particular trope like artifact title something that is like, that something that is in the title, but uh, at the end of the day, it's kind of like false statement because it's not actually what's happening? I think it may be, let me check. Like, I distinctly remember there are a couple of cases where, you know, the title is stating one thing, but uh, usually it's not ah. for comedies, you can imagine. Let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, an artifact title. A series that made perfect sense when it began, but after a number of changes to the premise, no longer makes sense to people who don't back... Um, who don't go back to the oh, so it's Oh, so it's kind of like the, the lyrics of Steven Universe's song. Opening song. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's let's hear what British Wesker has to say. I you know, you know I I'm a big softy for traditional houses like this. I I would love to live in one of these houses. Mm -hmm. Do any these houses exist in your country? Um, back in the... not so much anymore, sadly. Iberian architecture has uh, gone through a lot of changes over the time waves due to the different We have a few of these through. houses. We have a few of these houses in various places. We still have loads of these kinds of houses all across America. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. if you ask a builder to make it that way. The Northern Territories, and particularly the Canada, are more suited for this due to the climate and everything. You don't owe me any pleasure. Look how sad I am. By the way, one thing uh, that I also love is um, when it comes to the detail of the, the song, because uh, later on when you see pieces of paper with writing mm -hmm. in them, the writing is in English. Uh, well, so they actually went out well, of their I mean, way. Country, well, yeah, that's the, but that's that shows you Takahata's dedication. Well, okay, okay. Okay, 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 sorry, McCary Canada, English and French speaking. Yes, yes. Um, uh, the Latin anime did something like that as well, where the writing in that anime is also in English, because, you know, it's UK, London specifically. Well, actually, um, when it was London 2012 with the Olympics, I, I, went, to, I went to that one. There were um, things in different languages there. During that time, anyway. On a similar instead note to what Pedro was saying, um, it does, a lot of animes tend to have this particular attention to detail. Um, particularly, a recent example that I can think of that is tied to my country is uh, Vento Audio, Part 5 of JoJo, since it's mostly set up in Italy. Every time there's something, someone writing on or a piece of things wrote, written, in Italian, it's actual Italian language and it's very accurate. It's not like, uh, you know, ravioli, ravioli, give me the pepperoni or something. Has there, so. been, a, has there been a JoJo set in... Uh, the first part uh, lives. Ah, okay. Phantom mm -hmm. Blood. But so, so yeah, Mrs. Spence, so yeah, basically, because there was a third party 
giving the message that the Cuthberts wanted to adopt a boy, apparently that third person that told Mrs. Spencer the message uh, misworded it, and uh, Mrs. Spencer got the impression that they wanted a girl. So apparently oh, this. So apparently this third person that uh, the that they asked to talk to Miss Spencer because as you can tell from the previous episode, Miss Spencer lives a bit away from the, from Green Gables. Um, apparently didn't get the then basically the messenger screwed up the whole problem. That's the basic. Gist of it's okay, like the game of uh, cordless telephone, I think it's called, where you know, the message gets de deteriorates so the more you go. On. But it's okay, guys. Because uh, it might not be necessary to send her back to the orphanage, as you're. Uh, as this, this episode, so far, this episode might as well be called "How Sad Can We Make Can." Well, Dwebs, uh, don't worry; uh, it changes halfway. Like I said, don't worry, Dwebs. Uh, we're going to make up with a handful of episodes full of jolly, happy uh, f uh, happiness. It's a roller coaster, <laughs> just like real life. Hooray! <laughs> That's, a, that's actually another good point that I'd like to bring up. Me and Jova have talked about various times, especially recently in our com in the commentaries, that uh, realistic writing doesn't necessarily equal good writing. However, mm, yeah. however, Lucy Maud Montgomery, uh, again, another message of how brilliant of a writer she was, um, she knows exactly what to take from reality and what to leave in reality. It all ties to that uh, that interview with Alfred Hitchcock. If you focus too much on just realism alone and what you think about it, that is the death of art. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's go inside. Have some tea. Yeah. Of course. No, no. <laughs> yeah, we started this outside and we will finish it out. Did I just hear correctly what she wants her for? Well, remember, Jova, it was a different time. I know, but like, dang. You have to think when, when you're portraying things in the past you have to present it accurately you can't just go change especially if you actually go from this yeah, yeah. to this kind of historical it, it, recreation yeah angle. it's it's kind of similar to how yeah, uh, obviously it's kind of similar to what me and jova were talking about in the beauty and the beast remake commentary inclusion is nice but it has to be inclusion that makes sense for the time period Okay. Work, 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 work. Work, work. This lady's a piece of work. Hey. Well, hey, she just wants her to pull her own weight around the house. Like, how bad could it get? Having some second thoughts, so. She, 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 she does make a good point, though. Um, her and Matthew haven't actually properly discussed this. So basically, she saw, oh shit, uh, poor Anne is gonna Whoa, be so. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> what is with that deep bass all of a sudden? <laughs> she literally <laughs> dropped it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, oh, so Anne, this is, Anne, get your this head is what happens flowers. when Anne's happy. 
Is this what happens when Anne's happy? All of a sudden she starts hearing bass guitar? It's supposed to showcase how uh, the change in mood from her. I'm like, from her. Yeah, I mean, happy now. Uh, I, I, I love uh, Marilla's reaction to what Anne says now. What am I getting myself what into? Have I gotten myself into? <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's going to start calling you mum. <laughs> well, uh, that's, uh, that's the thing she writes. Uh, her, her intention, as you're going to see in the next episode, is that she would like to call her Aunt Marilla. But, um, but uh, she, no, for heaven's sake, just call me Marilla. <laughs> I mean, I can see why, because calling her mom would sort of lead to her calling Matthew father. And well, considering how Matthew and Marilla are brother and sister... It might get a little weird. She could call him. She could call him on. There you go. There you go. Um, again, 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 again. Seed lips, flowers. No more misery. Seed lips, again, we're again, done. I, no more again. misery. Sure, sure, sure. Imagine if she said, by the way, my mother and father are brother and sister. That's, uh... Again. That, again. that could cause a bit of uh, kerfuffle. Again, it, it likes, again, um, again, Lucy knew exactly what she was doing when she wrote this. Again, it's the misery part of the story that makes this all the more satisfying. Uh, it wouldn't be impactful if we didn't have those early bits. Hey, she's really uh, silent by her standards. Seriously, her. though, I mean, the man, I don't know if it's the instrumental mixing, but the bass seems to be overpowering everything. I get an idea why she's like that, uh, Dweebs. Uh, um, you know, her extrovert na you know, nature is compensated by her, you know, absorbing the war that is around her, you know, in truces like this. Hence, uh, essentially, she doesn't have a quote-unquote normal uh, case. Uh, I, want to, I, 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 I want to ask you to hear this. This is a good joke. Pay attention to Marilla's face, by the way. Yeah, pay attention to her face. In a few moments. Yeah, right after N. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh god. No, did you notice? <laughs> yeah. She was about to laugh. That 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 is great character animation right there. It's so subtle and yet so effective. <laughs> she let out a little snort as well. You can't help but imagine it that way. <laughs> <laughs> And yet, uh, and yes, and the book also that describes. Matthew, you have you been standing there the entire time? And yes, and Matthew also. Uh, sorry, Matthew. Uh, the book, <laughs> the book also describes uh, Mar uh, that Marilla is trying to con uh, trying to contain uh, a giggle as well. So, day six. Yeah. I've been stood here in this one spot. The cat is still not straight. good company. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I'm not sure if it was done on purpose, but the other lady, she kind of looked like she had a slight green hue to her face. Uh, uh, yeah, Yoshifumi, yeah. Kondo, Yoshifumi Kondo, she wrote, the character designer who would also go on to direct Whisper of the Heart for Studio Ghibli. Um, uh, he was a character designer and animation director. He most likely designed her like that specifically to make her unappealing. No, that's what I thought they were trying to make her look like a witch, sort of. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a more serious take on the gonk type of gag that is common in Japanese animation and manga, of course. It's nice to be back here, Mr. Flower. Susan. 
Well, Anne, you talked your way out of trouble. <laughs> well done. You've rolled a 10 on diplomacy. Well, considering how she managed to turn around all the people that she has met until this point, as soon as she got here, I guess the natural 20s have been rolling like court case. I'll say. I like this conversation between them. See, he agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, everybody hates Miss Blewett, it seems. Well, could you at least let me finish my so sentence, are you. please, sis? Uh, no, no, uh, no, 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 uh, no, 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 uh, it's simply just him. <laughs> Good for what? I don't know what you're talking about. My heart is stern and strong, it's a thank you very much. It's a compliment, just take it. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, sure, whatever. Now, please let me milk the cow. Exactly. <laughs> I gotta say, you're by the start of this... I do not like these new feelings that she fills me with. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but by the standards of a dub made in the 1980s, this is actually not that bad. Okay. Really? Okay. 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 Here's the idea, like uh, like we've said, this One is a South African South studio. Africa of all places too. Yeah, this is a South African studio in the 80s with not that many resources, but you can tell the people who made this dub genuinely Pour, are pouring their heart and soul into this. Like uh, you can tell, the actors are trying their hardest. Um, like uh, there's a lot of love uh, coming out of the, uh, of these performances. Especially considering that we'd get a lot of really crap dubs in the decade after this one, like Garzy's Ring, for example. I mean, uh, yeah, no, the show wasn't that great in the first place. But the dub kind of um, hammered that point home. Ma Matthew's actor, in particular, he's to me, he's absolutely perfect. Like uh, he he sounds absolutely he reads his lines absolutely perfectly to me. Like he, he hey, sounds Dwibs, genuine. Anime... Dwibs, hmm? that anime yeah. you're talking about is is it like a Black Clover case where the where the English dub, while ne not well not necessarily great, is much better than the original Japanese dub. Uh, to an extent, I guess, because there's more memorable lines. <laughs> and, but then the there's... Uh, and in the case of Black Clover, the character doesn't sound like a car. And then there's the ghost stories dub, which, I don't care what you say, I consider an improvement over the original on all accounts. See, Shiroi, now your finger is happier. And I'm sure it will, uh, will keep being like that for all it, eternity. Actually, Teo, we're going to have quite a few succession of chapters where it gets progressive and progressively happier as it goes along. Uh, like I said, chapter 9, we even have a friendship song and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, Pedro, I have some distinct memories, at least scholastic oh. memories recording my country so you know that shit is gonna go down eventually. This is one of my favorite scenes of the book and as well as at this show because it's... Uh, uh, this is some great humor we're about to see in a, in a few moments. Uh, mate, not for nothing, but I think smoking around the kids get them. Well, the kid is upstairs, so... Also, also a it... different time. Yeah, that too. There's the bass guitar again. Alright, here we go. I love this one.
<gasps> and in the 19th century, that's a big no-no. I mean, you, you, you'd think that, uh, you know, being part of a bigger family and with red hair, she would have been, you know, strictly Catholic educated. And that she just said to, uh, she knows the basics, uh, but she's never, uh, but apparently Mr. Mrs. Thomas okay, and it, Mrs. Yeah, Hammond. Yeah, yeah, due to her circumstances connected to her story, yeah, she did not have much time. Yeah, but you have that candle. Also, lady, at least you get to know them in English. I try them to learn them in Latin. Then you can talk with me. Oh boy, that must have been fun for you. Well, I take the positive that I could get in that and learn, and the fact that I learned some Latin with that. But it's okay because Morella is going to teach her how to do it. Meanwhile, I just learned Latin from where most people learned it from, One Winged Angel. Hey. Also, Tia, you want to hear something that's cursed? One Winged Angel, but in C major. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, You're okay. giving your bit too much carte blanche, uh, lady. <laughs> all right, all right. Go ahead, Anne. Well, this clearly doesn't take place in England. Everyone sounds English. <laughs> I know. Oh. It does remind <laughs> me of the... <laughs> uh, listen here, listen here. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. All right. There don't always expect an immediate result. Yeah, here you go. I love this one. Yes, that's that's really the, the that's actually the yeah. tone that he actually said. <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually been um, at a mass uh, or at least a congregation like that, Shira? Um, Not as moral as as she's saying. This. I don't remember. At most, at most in my case, we just had prayers and school assemblies. <laughs> yes, I think you did. <laughs> That face. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like, started so differently. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. Here's what Marilla's really thinking. This day certainly did not end the way I thought it would. Certainly did not go the way I thought it would. No good night. <laughs> I think she's had her fill. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. notice how she chose to come here and not tell her that because she doesn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Marilla, Marilla doesn't usually like to make herself vulnerable. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, what's with these random frames that they put around? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, hold on. Oh. Yay! See, sure. happiness is happy. See, and there was much rejoicing. Yay! Yay. Alright, so yeah, um, my final thoughts overall. It yeah, it was it was uh, it was pretty fun. I mean, uh, not quite as uh, misery inducing as the last one because well, but the point of this was to help overcome some of that. <laughs> And, uh, and it's nice to see that uh, Anne and uh, the aunt are uh, starting to um, work on improving their relationship, like learning how to pray. Marilla, um, uh, yeah, and that's the thing that she doesn't like to be called aunt. She would just prefer, if, uh, and we'll call her just Marilla. So, ah, okay. okay. Uh, to answer Jova's question, uh, basically, Jova, here's the idea. Um, the idea, Jova, is that uh, that frame is where every time that happens, uh, you notice how it happens every time they introduce the character. Um, usually, it's supposed to have the name of the character uh, um, under there. And the reason the original camera negatives don't have the text in is because they intentionally left it are not there so that later people can put subtitles depending on the language so the people so the people who animated this actually fought ahead kind of like how snow white actually did make alternate versions of the dwarves beds with uh, italian spanish and i think also german versions of the names of the dwarves you know so this was actually one of those things that were made specifically for uh subtitles overseas mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. um uh, in the original TV broadcast, it shows the text. However, since the Blu-rays uh, are remasters of the original negatives, the original negatives don't have the subtitles there because they were intentionally made that way so that people can I impose the subtitles depending on the language later. Um, so that was the basic oh, yeah. idea. That was the basic idea. Go ahead. Good episode. <sighs> I overall enjoyed it, and this has been a good first arc of a story. Well done. All right. Next. Uh, so Shiroi, you feeling so Shiroi? Is it better now? It was better in the last episode already. So you're a bit late to asking me, but no, this was very good. Um, yeah, I I don't know what else to say about it. Um, no, this episode and the last one were the best so far, I think. Oh, don't worry. Um, uh, episode seven is wonderful, but uh, yeah, sure. whatever. Yeah, and episode nine is a treasure. Joyful foreshadowing. Joyful foreshadowing on Jova's part. That's to say, Jova will have a lot to say in that episode. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, Tail, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, again, pretty pretty neat uh, in how they portrayed uh, um, the growing care development for uh, for both uh, you know the the two main female leads uh, at least for now. You know. Um, and also props to the makers for actually, um, at least for, probably for the one in the other, to actually understanding also the correct uh, um, music to tone to use for the particular play. We could have just easily fuck around, you know. That's actually... By or just hitting, but no, we actually went the extra mile. That's actually from the original Japanese version. She also says it like that in the Japanese version. The, mm. that, that's how the book describes it, that she says it anyway. So it's meant to be mm. like that anyway. True, no, true. But the book describes it only with words. At least here they also mentioned, you know, the... Um, the fair cover to have the extra step with the music. But again, pretty neat stuff. Next. It's just one of those cases where I absolutely love everything about this series because every single line feels uh, real. And keep in mind, I said the word real, not necessarily realistic. Feels real, earned, and heartfelt just because the characters are so well realized already. And it only, and trust me, it only gets better as it goes along. Um, the reason in, uh, payoffs like this, happy payoffs like this work is because Lucy Maud Montgomery, unlike other care, uh, unlike other writers that that I've complained about in certain uh, stuff over here in this channel, is uh, because they don't do the necessary legwork to have stuff like this happen. But 
remember and now i can also answer jova's question you asked me about the pacing a few episodes ago jova now i can explain to you very well now that you were able to see this arc in particular this is a very methodically paced anime in the same way that the book is very methodically paced everything has a purpose everything is a piece of a larger puzzle all, like i said all those uh all the atmosphere the long run sorry the long walk from the station to the house in the first step in the first episode the long run from the house to mrs spencer's house everything is done with a specific pacing it's meant for character development for for allowing the story and the characters to breathe and allow everything to come together in a way that feels believable earned and genuine so yeah that's the yeah. that's the that's the primary idea um lucy Mont montgomery with these books was intending to write characters that develop and behave like normal people w would uh sorry real people would i think that's the best uh, term to use and as a result nothing feels cart nothing feels cartoonish nothing feels nothing feels forced nothing feels fake everything feels genuine and and it's a true testament to how brilliant lucy was as a writer and once again this adaptation would couldn't be in better hands with takahata adding even more brilliant writing uh on top of it just to sweeten the deal so yeah another great episode and now we're going to get episode all right to the next time everybody for episode six and of green gables actually this is this is actually so join us next time for Anne of Green Gables. How I, Green Gables. I, do, I, I do, however, there you go, Joe Dwebs. Apparently, the English dub agrees with you, or rather, sorry, the apparently the episode the show agrees with you because the, the, the episode where she officially becomes Anne of Green Gables is literally called Anne of Green Gables. So, there you go. Uh, however, it is an interesting thing. This is the first deviation. The episode is called Anne of Green Gables, but the app, but the actual chapter it's adapting, chapter seven, is called and says her prayers that's because this episode covered the entirety of chapter six plus the opening paragraph of uh chapter seven which is the whole prayers thing so basically again um by the time they finished uh chapter six of the book we're like well we still have like five minutes might as well get the prayer part of that of, of chapter seven done why not so there you go all right everybody tune in next time then yeah